In the 2004 NASCAR Nextel Cup Series season, Jeff Gordon nearly won the championship. He was a weekly contender, winning tons of races, and it seemed like in 2005, he was going to do it again. And at the start of the season, it really seemed like he was going to do that again. But unlike 2004, instead of getting stronger as the year went on, his season collapsed from underneath the weight. So today, we're going to go back and look at the biggest season collapse in Jeff Gordon's career. It all starts at the Great American Race, the Daytona 500. Gordon had a great car throughout Speed Weeks. While not having the best and most dominant car throughout, he had a good enough car that he was able to stay up front with dominant cars like Tony Stewart and Michael Waltrip. Well, with Waltrip falling out early and Stewart getting shuffled back, the door opened wide for Gordon to lock in his third Daytona 500 victory. Here they come, boys. White flag. One to go. Scott Riggs to fourth. Stewart looks to go three wide. Thinks better of it. He is trapped behind Jimmy Johnson. Boy, that 97 car of Kurt Busch is a fast piece of equipment right there. He's got to look. He's the only Ford in the front five. What can he do? Look at Scott Riggs in that 10 car. He's trying to get him a top five finish in this Daytona 500. And there's Jimmy Johnson on the 48 on the outside, Daryl. Somebody needs to get up there and go with him, but I don't know if Tony Stewart can run the outside or not. He had an all day. Push to the outside. Gordon slams the door on him in the turn three. Six cars have a chance to win it. Jeff Gordon's going to lead him into turn four. They're one mile from home. Tony Stewart just slid up the racetrack. He and Jimmy Johnson are going to make contact. Three wide. They're bouncing off each other. Jeff Gordon's going to win his third Daytona 500. Kurt Busch, Dale Jr. The win started his season off well. But what it also started was a carousel of different performance standards. The next week at California with the inverted 24s, he ran in the top 10 all day long. But instead of locking in that finish, his engine had issues late, and he finished 30th, and dropped him down to 10th in the points. A few weeks later at Atlanta, he crashed out early, which again hurt him as he had been trying to build up with a great finish at Las Vegas. So, come to race 6 a few weeks later at Martinsville, Gordon actually really needed a good run. Early on, he fell a few laps down, so it would be a really, really hard charge if he was going to be able to get even a top 10 out of it. But over the course of the last half of the race, he staged a huge comeback. He managed to get his laps back, race up to the front, and get his second victory of the season. He thinks he has a chance. He really pulls close here. We're coming to the white flag. Had just that little bit of a, a lag in the restart on the nine car where Jeff got that jump, that three or four car lane jump. That's, that's just made all the difference in the world. Chevy, Dodge, Ford, and two Dodges with both Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace in the top five in their final Martinsville spring appearance. Jeff Gordon scores his 71st career win. A few weeks later at Talladega, he did something even better. He absolutely dominated in his Revenge of the Sith car. He led 139 of 194 laps and was pretty much untouchable throughout the day. He had basically single-handedly taken the field behind the woodshed and broken its back. He beat Tony Stewart and Michael Waltrip, the two guys who had better cars than him at Daytona, handily in a green-white checker finish. And this put him up to third in the points, 151 above the cutoff line. Four cars with a little breakaway. Jeff Gordon protecting that bottom of the racetrack. You can see Michael Waltrip all over the back bumper of Tony Stewart. They just can't get to him. They're there, but they can't get enough run on him to get a, get a, get by him. It's a long way down here to the start finish line, but I just don't think they got the steam. Jeff, this car is just too fast. A lot of races have been decided between right here and the finish line down past the pit exit. But Jeff Gordon is going to hold him off and win the Aaron's 499. And the next week at Darlington, while he didn't get the win, he managed to get a second place finish and vault himself to second in the points. Now 188 points over 11th. Heading into the 2005 race at Richmond, Gordon looked to be a lock for the chase. And this is where it all went to hell in a handbasket. Jeff Gordon has come back to pit road. Jimmy Johnson hit right side on there. Johnson hit the wall and broke a tie rod. 
his Hendrick teammate and they came in here one two in points. They have had to adjust a tie rod. And now they're pulling the right front off again. And it looks like not only are they going to change right side tires, they're going to continue to adjust on that some more. And Jeff Gordon headed to the garage Hendrick Motorsports, as you saw with Jimmy Johnson, too. Some problems here for Jeff Gordon. Well, now he's about to be caught. Oh, trouble! Brian Victor's got in the back of one car, turned it sideways. Jeff Gordon's in it. Bill Elliott. Martin, the six. Bill Elliott was the car that Vickers got into. Jeff Gordon pounds the wall. They're stacking up behind him. Yeah. There's Ricky Brown on the wall. 42. And one car got heavy damage. It looked like the car just got away from Gordon. I, I believe he was alone. Oops. I was mistaken. A little bit of help from the 20, Tony Stewart. In three races, Gordon's 188-point gap evaporated. After the Dover crash, the gap had went from 185 points to 11 points negative. In three races, he plunged from 2nd to 11th with a point loss of 199 on the cut line. A brief top 10 at Pocono slowed the bleeding and even propelled him to 9th in the standings and back into the chase. But this was only short-lived. Jeff Gordon trying to work his way up through. He's climbed to fourth, but uh, he's got Bobby Labonte all over him. Mike, he has bigger issues. Jeff Gordon just told Robbie Lewis, I have something amiss with the transmission. I believe it is stuck in fourth gear. Another Hendrick car possibly snake bitten with transmission trouble today. He and Robbie trying to formulate a game plan of what to do. One, obviously, uh, point they're going to do is probably bring the car back to the garage. They're formulating that game plan as we speak. Falling to 14th in points, Gordon had a pick-me-up race. With a 7th place run at Daytona, he sat 13th in the standings, 48 points out at the season's midway point. Unfortunately for Gordon, one of his biggest black eye weekends on his career would take place, this time at the Chicagoland Speedway, where Gordon ran poorly for most of the day. In the closing laps, he was merely nursing his number 24 car home just outside the top 20 to limit the blow in the points one that would be unavoidable due to Mike Bliss. Because of how pissed he was at Bliss, Gordon approached the driver of the Zero car at the airport in Chicago later that day and allegedly punched him in the face. And it led him to tumble down to 15th in the points. A 25th place at Loudoun followed by a 14th at Pocono only served to keep him there. Sitting 114 points out with six races left in the regular season, the 24 team was at the brink. And it seemed like that was what got them to have a staged brief turnaround that may have saved their 2005 season. At Indianapolis, he came home in 8th. This cut the margin down to 87. At Watkins Glen, the 24 brought it to the line 14th, which made the gap 67. At Michigan, the field was shuffled around due to pit strategy and fuel strategy. So while Gordon finished a mediocre 15th, he still gained a spot to 12th in the points, 58 out of the cut line. The Bristol night race would be the site of this late season charges fruition. As with a 10th place, Jamie McMurray finishing two laps down and Gordon finishing sixth, it would be the 24 jumping up to the top 10 in the 10th spot. Now, only 11 markers to the good with two races remaining to the chase. The moral victory there would only last a week though. A 21st place finish at Fontana knocked him back down to 12th again, now 30 points out of the chase. And at Richmond, he had a good car to start, but then the handling left the car and the pace left as well. With it, he limped home two laps down in a 30th place run. Because of this, Gordon would be one of three drivers from the 2004 chase to miss it in 2005. With the season lost, Rick Hendrick pulled the plug on the crew chief Robbie Loomis's time atop the 24 pit box. And in his place for the final 10 races of the year, Gordon would be paired with a young Steve Letarte. The pair started off shaky, but ended the season with five top 10s in the last seven races, including a season-sweeping win at the Martinsville Speedway. 
In 2006, Letarte guided Gordon back into the chase before becoming a championship favorite again in 2007. Now, going back and with all that, I want to pass it all to you. What are your thoughts on the biggest season collapse of Jeff Gordon's career? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Also, a huge thanks to all of my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.